Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of I'm Doing Great, Citizens of the Grateful Nation. Thank you for being here. We have a very interesting show because today we have the first ever sponsor appearance. So we have a new sponsor of the show, Heaven's Harvest. It's a survival food company for survivalists and preppers. I like preppers. I'm a prepper. I want to be called a prepper. Call me prepper. I don't find it to be a negative word. Uh, but we have... Clayton Llewellyn, who's the CEO, founder, and janitor of Heaven Harvest. He is in the studio. He's right there. And we're going to talk mm -hmm. to him. And guess what? Gina's here, too. Is so it's mine? one back happy family. Fa it's one, I almost said one black happy family. It's one big happy family. We can identify as black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So Llewellyn, welcome to the show. Thank, thank you for having me. Uh, can you tell our viewers what your company is? When you started it, why you started it, and how long you've been in business? Oh, how much time we got? <laughs> we got, we got, we got a little right. bit of time. We've probably been doing this for 10, 12 years now. We started it in Florida. Um, there were two things that got me going into it. The first one was I was working for farmers down there, like on the big mega farms. You know what I mean, like the ten thousand acre farms. And we were building, we were doing, we were building barns and fences and that kind of stuff for them. When I was, we had just had our first kid, and I was watching them like day after day, spray these fields just mm -hmm. constantly with chemicals, constantly, you know, and it was, it was crazy because they'd be full of weeds one day, you'd come back the next day and everything is dead except for the plant itself, mm. you know, whether it was a tomato plant or a pepper plant and it gets you thinking, what the heck are they spraying on this stuff? <clears throat> Bless you. you start doing a little bit of research and digging into it and these are Roundup Ready crops. They're genetically yeah. modified seeds. Mm -hmm. So the thing, the same stuff they're spraying on those crops is the same stuff we were spraying in Vietnam with Agent Orange. Mm, yeah. And we're eating this stuff. So that kind of got me into like the heirloom seeds and eating, you know, providing better food for our family. Mm -hmm. Also, while we were down there, um, a hurricane came through. Have you ever been to Florida for a hurricane? Not for a hurricane. I've been to New York for a hurricane. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I mean, everything sells out of the grocery stores. Right. It's, I heard an old lady tell me once that during a hurricane, uh, bread, milk, and eggs sell out first. Mm -hmm. And she's convinced everybody stays home, stays home and makes French toast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but everything sells out. And I had ordered some food from a prepper company that was doing it back then. Mm -hmm. And when I got to my house, I'd bought a year's worth of food. And when it got to me, I opened it up and was excited to get into it. And what they were advertising and what you got were two different things. Huh. Mm -hmm. There were barely enough calories to get three and a half months out of it. And then what I didn't realize at the time is the FDA actually regulates serving size. Really? Yeah. So that what they were saying is you just need three servings a day, a breakfast, lunch, and a dinner. And whether that was a serving of pudding or rice or whatever, they were counting that as a meal. Really? So that got me into the, you know, we need to do something better than this. And Wait, what's the incentive to regulate serving size? That, there's no really no incentive, but when we think of a serving of food, I think of like a meal almost. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well... A tablespoon of food isn't hardly a meal. No. Yeah, so it's... So the it's, servings were like this small. Oh, they were tiny. They are literally a tablespoon of food in some, some cases. What? Yep. Yeah, like when I get... Um, so I get salmon. Uh, at, like I'll get salmon at work. It'll be two pieces. And I'll say two servings. And I'll say there's no way that this one little piece of salmon is one serving. Like I don't know who decides that if it's the company or what do, you, what do you think is it the fda that's i don't know saying how many calories is one nope, serving nobody or? regulates that but now that we have to keep like track of calories and everything on meals mm -hmm. the smaller you make the meal the yeah. smaller the calories look so right 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 i'm sure that has a lot to do with it oh interesting i don't get that okay so you're seeing you're seeing that happen um go through a hurricane and then what else what, what, what happens from there where's the timeline where are you at as far as the idea for heaven's harvest have you even thought of it yet or yeah we no i hadn't thought of it but we had put together that heirloom seed kit mm -hmm. well we put together uh, some heirloom seeds and i got to thinking if i'm surely i'm not the only one thinking of this stuff you know what i mean somebody else is worried about what they're eating so we put together an heirloom seed kit and i didn't tell a whole lot of people because i wasn't sure it was going to be a good idea or a bad idea mm -hmm. turned out it worked pretty good mm -hmm. um Within like the first six weeks, we sold a couple thousand seed kits. Really? Yep. And we had marketed them to the survivalist, mm -hmm. but it was kind of a split group there. You know, a survivalist and people that are worried about eating healthier buying these things too. So right. hmm. that kind of got the seed kit going. And like I said, shortly after that, we'd ordered food for the hurricane. I was disappointed with that. 
And it just kept building and building and building and going from there. Oh, interesting. So there wasn't really anybody doing what you were doing now back then? No, there was. There were a bunch of companies doing it, but there's always room for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Somebody else telling the truth, you know, Mm -hmm. like what we were, and they still do it to this day. I hear the advertisements all the time on like national radio and stuff like that. You know, a year's worth of food for $500. It's impossible. It ain't going to happen. You can't go to the grocery store today and buy a year's worth of food for $500. Mm -hmm. So we we put a little truth into it, you know, about what we're selling and what we're marketing. Mm -hmm. Because I, God forbid something ever happens and people need that food. There's going to be a lot of people in trouble thinking they have more than what they really do. Yeah. I mean, Gina, talk about your electricity being out for how many days over Christmas. What is it about our area? I feel like it's, because we're not in the same zip code, but you're pretty close to us. I'm 10 minutes away. Our yeah. electricity goes out all the time here, all the time. Last week, it just went out. There was no weather. <laughs> there was no wind either. It just went out all of a sudden. And then I called and they said, yeah, we have 39 different areas of the city that's in your area that that's out of electricity. I said, why? There's no weather. I said, do you have anyone working on it? And the first woman told me, yeah. And then I called back and called another representative. And she says, she was really nice. She's like, there's nobody working on it right now. I'm really sorry. And they just don't get, they just like, you know, our electricity goes off for like days. Well, see, you're starting to see that everywhere in the country though. Our power grid around here is so bad. And especially in a new area growing like this. Yep. I mean, our power grid can't, can't handle it. Can't keep up with it. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the worst in the world. We're so far behind. Like, yeah. So it probably has a lot to do with it. I know where we're at. It goes out all the time. Yeah. Because we, because I, I was asking my dad when we grew up in Georgia, I grew up in South Georgia. And he says when we were in growing up in South Georgia, it would go all the time too. But I lived in, I've lived in a lot of different states and all the states where there's really bad weather. I've never had electricity issues. Like never. I've been through hurricanes in New York. Same thing. I've been through no snow really, blizzards like, in Boston. It's insane. And, it's I don't like know what's what it is about Tennessee. There's something about or maybe it's just the southern states. I don't know because apparently it's bad in Georgia too. I don't know. Guys, put in the comments. By the way, it's banana bread. It's delicious. Put in the comments your conspiracy theories as to what makes Tennessee and Georgia's grid so weak. I hate it. It's weak. It's like low testosterone grid. It's <laughs> awful. Yeah. It really is. Can we do that? Low testosterone grid. Low something? T. Low T grid. So Clayton, let me tell you. I'm I'm gonna speak like this now because Clayton's here. When, um, so I, do you have a problem with the word prepper or do you, do you, uh, welcome that word? No, I don't mind it. And that's, uh, that's a big misconception as to this business that we're in, because mm-hmm. the minute you talk, start talking about like survival food or prepper food, people yeah. get this connotation of there's like a grizzly mountain man living on the side of a hill with a bunker in the ground and ammo, guns, and food, and gold stocked up. Which is like, awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, that well, sounds yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> well, but yeah. that's that's not really the reality of it. Mm-hmm. Like, a couple years ago, we really started tracking where we were sending stuff, and you'd be surprised how much of it goes to, like, New York City, Los really? Angeles, oh, really? to neighborhoods like this. I mean, this isn't for mountain people. Right. Your neighbor next door has it. Right, exactly. You know? And yeah. it's, you see things happening, like, in, uh, what is it, the Sierra Nevadas last week or two weeks ago. They had record snowfall. Oh, that's right. And yeah. that gets everybody thinking about this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like, well, maybe it's not a bad idea. Maybe we should keep some. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this stuff is being sold in neighborhoods, uh, urban areas. Mm-hmm. Am I close enough to that thing? No, you're fine. All you're right. fine. I can't hear it anyway, but I'm sure it's fine. But it's, I mean, it's it's really is shocking who buys this stuff right. because it's not the preppers. Quite honestly, the preppers are hoarding rice and beans. Right. You know? And that's not what we have. We've got good meals, like nutritious meals. I'm sure you guys have been in bad situations or a rough day and you get home. And the first thing you want to do is have a good meal. Yeah. You know, and so we thought about that when we were packing these up. If you're in like a stressful situation, you know, here's a good meal to eat, not just a pile of rice and beans. Ah. I found some freeze dry chicken my husband got. I found it in the back of our like second pantry. Apparently got for emergencies, but I forgot the brand. It's like something Patriot. I looked at the bag and was like, that does not look appetizing at all. Mm. <laughs> there, yeah. a, I know a lot of a lot of places that sell this stuff. It's just bland. Like yes, yeah. that's what it looks like. It is. It's it's really bland. We've uh, we've tried to avoid all that, and it's tough sometimes to sell a product that's better than your competitors. You've really got to do shows like this where you can talk to people and explain to them the difference because when you put them shelf, you know, side by side, nine times out of pen, ten, people just want to grab the first one. Like, grab the cheap one. What's cheap? What's cheap? Right. Visual and cheap. Well, so, here's the question. Are they supposed to be 
I guess the op, whatever the opposite of bland. Like, are they supposed to be the tastiest meals you've ever had? Like, not necessarily, right? They're supposed to be there for a high caloric count and then, you know, to sustain you, but also be like not disgusting, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is a lot of people think of an MRE too. Right. You know what I mean? Like, where you're just, it's loaded with calories and that's it. It's a bland food. That's not how this stuff is. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to compare it to like, you ever buy like the Lipton soups? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you just add water to yeah. them, boil it. Yeah, it yeah. tastes just like that kind of stuff. Okay. I mean, okay. it's got flavoring in it, and little it's bit good of salt. stuff. A little bit of salt. This is sorry, our it, viewers hate this. This is why I do it, though. They love when he good. eats on yeah, they camera. Like they like when he eats, chews straight into the microphone. Yeah, that's so their favorite thing. I had, I had, um, this was before you moved to Tennessee, but this is when Carly was pregnant. It was the summer of 2020. It was during COVID. Our electricity was out for about a week, maybe. During the summer. Yeah, during the summer. And it was one of those things where we don't have a generator. We didn't have one. Also, I don't understand like how you're supposed to run like a refrigerator and air conditioning off of one generator. Yeah. So you gotta buy gas for it. If it's electrical, if it's solar, it's not as powerful. So I'm wondering like that would have been the perfect situation to have what you what you sell. Like that would have been great. And I'm assuming that it's not necessarily for a lot of like natural disasters, but it's a lot of like this grid being weak. Mm. Um, I don't know. And, and what what else are some, you know, can there's, you do camping and stuff like that? Or? Oh, absolutely take a camping. We take a camping all the time. Mm-hmm. There's, but it, I'll tell you what, it's one of those things that I hope all the food we sell never has to be eaten. Mm. I really do. But the reality of it is like during when COVID hit, we had hundreds of people calling us. Like It didn't even hit me. Like, but hundreds of people calling us saying, hey, my mom and dad are, you know, way out there oh, by themselves right, yeah. and they're afraid to go to the grocery store. They cracked into your buckets and started eating that food. Really? Like, this stuff came in handy. Like we used it, like, mm. which was pretty cool. You know, it right. was, but it was one of those situations. And it tasted great. And it tasted great. But it was one of those situations that like, I didn't even think about that. I've never thought about that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thinking like hurricanes, natural disasters, the yeah. power grid grows out. You know, that's what I'm picturing. Mm-hmm. And here we have a pandemic and the stuff's getting eaten so people don't have to go to the grocery store. Right. Can we talk a little bit about the science of how these things uh, are made to last? Let's say, so a typical kit, what's what What was, we talked about this on the phone, what was the most popular uh, kit that you were selling? Was it three month or? Well, we have an, we've got six different buckets. Okay. We've added two new ones here really recently. Um, there's an entree bucket, there's a 60 serving it's it's an entree bucket too. We have a fruit and vegetable bucket, a breakfast bucket, a protein bucket mm-hmm. with beef, chicken, and eggs in it, and then we just added an organic bucket. Oh, it's yeah. We're we're having a hard time keeping that one in stock. Oh, really? We've had okay. so many people ask for organic foods, which it was kind of one of those things. Just because they ask for it doesn't mean they're going to buy it. Right. Well, it turns out that they really wanted it. They really wanted an organic okay. bucket. So so how long does let's say how long can a bucket last? You throw it on your shelf. How long is it good for? They're twenty five years. Really? 25 years. The beef, chicken, and eggs only have a 15-year shelf life. So okay. we've separated them and put them in their own bucket so that they don't contaminate the other buckets. Okay. But the secret to it is it's freeze-dried food. Okay. And it's and during the freeze-drying process, they suck out 99.999% of the moisture mm-hmm. as opposed to dehydrating where you only get about 90, 95% of it. Okay. So the food lasts much longer. It's sealed ah. up tight. The nutritional value stays there. Wow. Yep. When you dehydrate something, you lose a lot of the nutritional value. Mm. So okay. freeze drying it, you know, you keep that nutritional value in there and the vitamins and the minerals. Oh, interesting. Okay. Now, that what do I? the next question was, are there any chemicals that are put in there to sustain them that long? Or is it just the pure, uh, the freeze drying of it? Just the freeze drying of it. He's pretty good with them buttons. I know, right? I have to be. Sometimes I'll be like this where the camera will be on your face and I'm talking and people will just hear me and I forget. I was like, oh, I forget to do it. Okay. But yeah, that's really, really interesting. So let's talk about some of the other products. This is like an infomercial for Heaven's Harvest, but it's a podcast. So you're getting the best of both worlds here. I know that you sell water filtration kits, right? Yep. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because I'm fascinated by that stuff. Let's, can we back it up and start from the beginning? Sure. This isn't for mountain people. Like, yes. This is for you. It's for city folk. It's for city folk. Mm-hmm. It really is. Like, this is for your neighbor next door. This is for people in urban areas. It's like, like a... I mean, it, it's, we buy health insurance. Mm-hmm. We buy car insurance. Mm-hmm. You know, we buy all these insurances. And the one thing most of us don't have is food insurance. Food insurance. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's kind of a one-time purchase. And like we said, it lasts for 25 years. I can't get over that. 25 years. That's 25 a long years. time. Yeah. 
I mean, we literally just went through a situation where, I mean, I'm sure you saw the refrigerator or grocery store shelves here. I mean, they were empty. Oh, with, right the egg, with, with the eggs? Yeah. Are you talking about that? Oh, well, yeah. eggs. And then when COVID hit, I mean, you couldn't get anything. Well, even just recently with eggs, because now there's yeah. like, what, the bird flu and all the birds are sick and we, we were out of eggs for eggs. a while. Yeah. yeah. People coming up with the eggs. I was like, I don't know. We don't have them. I don't know. So. What's I was figuring up the other day, if you had bought one of our protein buckets two years ago, you'd actually be saving money oh, as opposed egg. to going to the grocery store today. Just oh. because of inflation. Too. Because of inflation. Wow. Oh, well, let's get some of those protein that, buckets. That's then. what I'm saying. Is that like another reason to buy buckets? It's just when the price of food goes sky high. Yeah, you oh, see. Oh, yeah. I've got my buckets. Yeah. Are we able to talk about water filtration now? Yes. Okay. But I, what I was getting at, what I got, I got off, off track there. But this isn't for like the guy in the mountains. This is mm-hmm. for everybody at home. He you knows know how I mean? to do that stuff he, already. Yes. He's got a well. He's yes. got all that stuff. Yes. He's got, he, that's all taken care of for him. But like, this is stuff that like everybody needs to think about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And have, I mean, honestly, have you given it any thought as to what you do if something bad happened? I think about it. I just don't do anything about like, it. Like, yeah. I mean, we're talking about the power grid. I worked in the power industry for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. You did? It is so vulnerable. Really? That one person could run around Nashville in an afternoon and completely shut it down for years. I don't want to tell you how to do that. Sure. But what? literally, they could shut it down for years, and they could do it in a couple hours. How? No, don't don't say it. No, what, what would tell I, us after. I will. Okay. What would this? I mean, what would it look like around here with no power? Not it, good. It'd take a year. It'd take a year to fix it. Not good. A year, and he could do it by himself in an afternoon. Really. But nobody ever thinks about situations like that. And the reality of it is, I mean, that's where we live today. I mean, that's what's going on around us. They didn't make a big deal out of it, but somebody went around six months ago doing the same thing to the power grid and shut it down in several places. Oh, yeah. What? Yep. Why? Why? Just because they're psycho? I think they may have been testing the grid. uh, Who knows? I believe it. 100% I believe it. 100% they're capable of it. So water filtration but system. There we go. There we go. Back to water filtration. <laughs> I'm really into this power grid stuff now. I had no idea it was that vulnerable. Gene is going to go down a black hole. Extremely. Power grid. Can I tell you? Go ahead. Yeah. Power transformers. You, I wouldn't put this on there. Okay. So let's do it after. Remind us. Let's do it after. All right. Remind me. Because I don't want to. I don't want to bleep it, or I don't want to do an edit. <laughs> you just went, and we're back. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> beep the whole thing. Yeah, no. But, tell us but, after though. But I mean, it's 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 so vulnerable, and it's stupid stuff like that. You know what I mean? We, our food supply in this country, mm-hmm. like fifty. I'll get to. I'll get to water. Yeah, filtration, no, 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 no worries. You, I'm not, I'm He's not really gonna, into the water filtration. Uh, I, don't know, I mean, I, I don't know what you guys grew up like, but we grew up. We had a garden. I mean, and this was only, man, it was longer than. I'm, gonna I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, this was, I, I want to say 30 years, but heck, I'm older than that. 40 years ago, growing up, I mean, we had a garden. Mm-hmm. We hunted for food. Mm-hmm. We had a root cellar growing up. I mean, we grew up cool. poor, but like we could sustain ourselves. How many people can do that today? Do y'all ever have a problem with worrying about where food's going to come from? Or you you guys are pretty good for the for the majority of your childhood? We, we hunted, fished, and caught it all ourselves. That's awesome. Grew it in the garden. Yeah. I mean, this... Like the the way we live today is completely different than how we grew up. This mm-hmm. is completely different than how I'm sure most of our parents grew up. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Everything was sourced locally. Like, I mean, two generations ago, they were delivering milk to our doorstep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's we don't realize like how vulnerable vulnerable our food system is. Mm-hmm. You know, from the, from the field to our table is a 90-day supply. So there, any disruption in the field, within 90 days, we're out of food. You know, and it's... It's kind of one of those things it's hard to talk about it's hard to imagine but we just witnessed it with covid and grocery store shelves yeah. that are completely empty you know my brother-in-law works for walmart and they were like stocking like clothes in the food section just to make it look like the food section was full really you know like instead putting of clothes behind it and then putting food up front no, at no, the front of the like, shelf they were like shutting off the back half of the food section and filling it with clothes and dolls and toys just to make it look like there was stuff on the shelves at walmart oh. What? You know, I mean, they're doing it today with certain products you can only buy so many of, mm-hmm. you know, like, well, only two per customer. Yeah, they give you, like, they ration it out. They ra- Yeah, they're rationing stuff. The, yeah. The baby formula shortage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are, are yeah. You, did you have that to deal with that? One. No. Well, our, our, my, our daughter was never on formula, thankfully, but that was a really big deal for a lot of moms. Yeah. yeah. My brother dealt with that for a little bit. Yeah. He was, they had to get stuff from Europe. They were like, yeah, stuff's out yeah, the, yeah. I knew a lot of moms and... who were making formula from raw milk. They would have to get raw milk from a local farm or like sheep's milk. Yeah. And there's like a whole, milk. you know, recipe for making formula from that. Yeah. Carly sold some breast milk. 
yeah yeah, yeah that's story. right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you hit me up like hey someone yeah. needs some breast milk i yeah, said yeah. okay yeah we can we can yeah but that was a big deal yeah really big i mean deal. and that's that's the most vulnerable in our society our kids mm -hmm. you know what i mean and like there's a shortage of baby formula yeah like i know yeah. when we had our first my wife couldn't couldn't breastfeed so mm -hmm. i mean we were dependent on stuff like that right so it's yeah but i mean it's that quick it happens that fast it's that easy but back to what we're, i'm we're going all over the place Go here. Ahead. But this like this needs to be like everybody needs to worry about this stuff. Everybody needs to take 30 minutes and accept or like go through their house and see what they have, what yeah. they need. You know what I mean? They talk about training all the time with like the Navy SEALs and guys mm -hmm. like that. Like it's the repetition that when something happens, they don't even have to think about it. Right. They just know what to do. But in like a situation like that, the first thing you need is like water, shelter, and food. Mm -hmm. Well, you're already at home. You know, and again, we just lived through this. What's the first thing they told us to do? Hunker down. Go home and shelter in place. Mm -hmm. Right. Stay home. Stay home. You know what I mean? So you're going to be surviving or worrying about taking care of yourself at home. And quite honestly, I don't want to go in the woods. My wife would kill me. We'd have one night in the woods and it'd be fun. And after that. Right. You know, yeah. it's, now I get it. Yeah. But I mean, you, you got to be able to like filter water or store water or save water. Mm -hmm. You got you've got your shelter. Mm -hmm. You know, you may want to be able to protect it somehow, but you've got your shelter and then all you have to worry about is food. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you first aid kits. Yeah. How many people know where a first aid kit is? I have two. I have actually, I have a we bunch. Have I have one. two in the house. I have one in the car and then I have one on my uh, battle belt. Yeah, we definitely need some more. We have yeah. one That's, in the kitchen. That's it. And again, this is one of those things. Go to Walmart, spend 50 bucks. Yeah. Go yeah. buy a boat box. You know what I mean? Like the mm -hmm. waterproof boat boxes. Spend 50 bucks, stock it with stuff, oh, stick yeah. it in a closet, and you know you're never going to touch it mm. unless it's that emergency situation or survival situation yeah. or something happens. Same way with food. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, don't eat these things if you don't have to. Stick them in your closet, leave them back there. You know that if you need them, they're there. Mm -hmm. The water filtration and the storage. Yeah. Some people have pools. That's a great way to get water. Oh, you know, right. yeah. we people talk about, we've got a 50-gallon drum. We'll stick a 50-gallon drum out front here and let me know how long it lasts. Right. You know, it'll be hoarded. It'll be gone. So right. figure out a way to store water in your house. Yeah. And you sell those those storage units. We got little, and that's something we tried. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's, we tested that. We tried that. Like what's the best way to do this? And that little water brick is perfect because yeah. anybody can carry it. That's right. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so we don't have to talk about specifically the science behind water filtration, but the stuff that I should have brought my laptop so I can like show the screen and be looking on the website. Um, but we can do that when we start doing ad reads. Um so the, the the types of water filtration that you have available um, on Heaven's Harvest, you have those bricks. Those are just pure storage. That's just storage. Okay. Do you sell any of like kits or the tablets or anything like that? We've got two different ways, really three different ways to filter water. Okay. We've got a water bottle that you, you dip it in the pond and you can drink right out of it. And as you're drinking, it's got a filter inside that'll filter anything out of it. Okay. And then we've got another one that's it's a pump. <laughs> that will filter several hundred gallons of water. Okay. And it's all mechanical, doesn't require batteries, doesn't require electricity. It's just, hand, it's just a hand pump. There's hand pump in this water. And that'll pump water, really? you know, into one of the water bricks or... Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> you love his accent, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I have a problem with people in accents. I mirror their accents. Do I sound... What do I sound like? You sound like this a little bit. Do I really? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, not too, there's not too much draw there, but yeah, the you got it. Do I really? Yeah. You're from South Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. You sound like a lot of people I grew up with. Yeah. I don't I have a Southern accent because my dad was born and raised in New York. So he Broke says out of you. talk, coffee. So I, you know, and my mom's Korean and English was her second language. So neither of them had a Southern accent, but everyone I grew up with had a Southern accent. What if you, what movie is it where, oh, is it the, the elect, the, the movie with, um, Will Ferrell and uh, that Ricky little, Bobby? Zach Gal no Zach Galifianakis, where Zach Galifianakis' dad they live somewhere in the south, and the the house the housemaid is an Asian woman with a old black woman's accent, like a old black southern. Oh, accent. what is that? One? You got to see it. it's hilarious. I forget the. I thought you were gonna say the Ricky Bobby scene where the kids like. Uh, I went to school today. My teacher asked me, what's the capital of North Carolina? I said, Washington, D.C. Yep. She said, no, you're wrong. I said, you got a lumpy butt. She yelled at me and I pissed in my pants. Mm. That movie. I can't hold my tongue anymore. Pretty good. These are my grandkids. You can't let them talk like that. Mm -hmm. You know what, old man? <laughs> I bring in too much money 
If we would have wanted us some wishes for a son, yeah. we would have named him. Walker and Texas Ranger. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Dr. Quinn and Medicine Woman. Medicine Woman, woman. okay. <laughs> hey, Chip, I'll throw all your war medals off the, off off the bridge. The bridge. <laughs> Chip, I'm going to come at you like a spider monkey. So water filtration system. <laughs> um, so you got the pumps. I'm actually going to, I well, haven't seen I'm your really, water filtration system. I'm really system, curious so about this because there's them. a show on uh, Netflix. It's called Outlast. I don't know if you watch Netflix. I don't know if you watch too much TV. You probably nope. don't. You're very busy. But it's a show where, you know, uh, 16 people are dropped off in the Alaska I, I've wilderness. I've seen the previews and they have, for that. Yeah. What's yep. it called? Outlast? Outlast. Like Is it like Outlast. a survivor yes, thing? Yeah. So okay. one team wins. It, it was weird because th these people are dropped off into different camps and they have to build they shelter. They compete against each other. Yeah. Too or, yeah. They have to yeah. build shelter. They they try to find shelter that's by a water source, running water, usually off like a little bit of a fall so that the rocks are sort of yep. clean, the water, whatever. This one woman goes to a little kind of stream, not a pond, not a waterfall, not moving water, but it's it's really weird. And one of the guys said, I don't know, I wouldn't drink from that. There's probably, there could be like dead animals upstream. We don't know what's, you know, we don't know what's up there. And the woman's like, no, but it's it's moving. It looks pretty clear. She goes in, she takes a little bit of it. She's like, I'm just going to taste a little bit of it. Has a little bit of water. And it's like, day, a day later, she had contaminated herself and cannot get up. <laughs> she's been throwing up and diarrhea all day. And I was like, why would she do that? So you're saying if she had her little well, water bottle with her, yeah, she I mean, could dip it in there like and drink it. This one? That's or it right there. There's two different ones there. These. These are really, really, really top of the line. Show it to the camera. See, we should have had the... I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I know it's my fault. We should have had the... No, we can, somebody we told can me. We can edit it up or whatever. But there's, there's sure. two of them. That one right there is really, really, really top of the line. But there's a Seychelles filter here, too, that will do the exact same thing. Okay. But the the other one, the GeoPress, is really... So is those it, are cool filters. They're so really the the water bottle, the one that filters the water bottle. If this woman would have had it, so can you go to a pond, dip that water bottle oh, yeah, in? Absolutely, and it's safe? absolutely. Man, we we Whoa. we go camping in Yellowstone every year. Like mm. go out there, and it was kind of one of those things. The first year you didn't think about it, but I mean we're throwing waters in our backpacks yeah. and like hiking in, and I'm like, this is stupid. Like, right? We've got products at the warehouse that all we got to do is carry one empty water bottle. That's, so I mean, you, you can get water you get anywhere. Oh yeah, we so use them all the time. That out. Yeah, I mean, that's like, what I was you don't drink you it. You probably scared. dip a thing in it and be like, "Nah, that's contaminated. Still, it's not working. Go we got to figure that out." Chug nope. it. So what is what is the the filtration device? Is it like I don't even know how this stuff works. Is it charcoal? Is it like how does that work? I believe this one here does have like charcoal in it. Mm -hmm. The one on top doesn't. They're just okay. they're filters like a like a water filter that you'd see in your house. Yeah, but I mean they catch. Like down to like a half micron, right? Something coming through. So it's oh man, they're just filters. They don't last forever, right? You know what I mean, right? Like right. You, they you need to replace to change, the filter. Yeah. Yep. Do they like drip dribble down when you fill the, the water? Or? No. the The pitcher here does dribble. That one, like okay. Gravity gravity feeds, but yeah. the the one the geo press, like literally, you fill the bottle up and then you just push the lid down on top of it. And that's nope. it. And it it filters through that way. The Seychelles bottle, yeah. As you suck through it, will filter. Really? Yep. Wow. At work, I got but this. It. But this is one of those things, too. Like, people never, never think about this. You no, know? And it's, never. I mean, the drinking out of the pond is great for television, but the reality of it is, like, if something happens, the first thing you got to be able to do is get drinkable water. Right. Well, if the power's out or, you know, that's... You can, you can last a week without food. Mm -hmm. Water is like... Two days. Two days, like, three days, yeah. You're going to be gone. Yeah. Could you... Listen, I'm not telling people to do this. If you have it, try it out. Maybe I don't. Know. Could you dip it into your toilet? Absolutely. Really? I would probably dip it in the tank. Oh, right, uh, right in the tank. Right. I mean, yes, it yes. just just because I would start yeah. in the tank and work yeah. my way Test to the bowl. Test it out, Mike. We okay. should do that for an ad. I, I just did it. I haven't thrown up in thirty five years. I'm worried. If you tell you me wanna, it's safe, dip it in. I, the absolutely. Freaking... But a lot of people drink like uh, public water sources. So you've puked in 35 years? Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, sorry. No. Uh, last time I threw up was when I was 10 years old. So it's been uh, 28 years. 28 years. Do you have like a fear of throwing up or you want to? No, I've, like? I've accepted it at this point. Like if it happens, it happens. I don't want to, but 28 years I haven't thrown up. You haven't puked. Yeah. I've been very close a couple of times when I used to drink. I remember I had about three quarters of red wine. Uh, I was on a date. And uh, went back to the Carly Turnoff. I went back to the place, and there was a bunch of people. We were all hanging out, and I fell asleep on the floor. And around three o'clock in the morning, I like that. I just jolted up. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna throw up." 
So the room is spinning everything. So I go to the bed, like step right, I'm going to throw up. So I go to the bathroom. I'm knocking on the door and there's some girl puking in there. And I was like, I have to do it too. Puke buddies. I have to be a puke buddy. And she's like, okay. So I went in there and it just never happened. You couldn't do it. Yeah. I think I burped and it went away. <laughs> yeah, I'm really weird. So you have not. No, puked. I have a pretty strong stomach when it comes to the other way. I'd rather that. Than th- no, I don't know. I think most people would rather yeah. that way than that way. Yeah. And then sometimes you get the both. Don't do ayahuasca. Yeah, right. No, you'll I know. do both. Yeah, that sucks. You do both. I'm not going to. Yeah, don't. Why would you do it? Stupid plant medicine days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you never done anything stupid in your life. I have. Where'd you grow up? New York, Long Island. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How'd you end up here? It's a good question. It's a good question, Clayton. Uh, well, no, I, I I was working for Alpha. You don't at the sound time like you're from New York. A, what do you mean? You don't have the New York accent. Yeah, you got to listen to me. Every once in a while, I always says because. Oh, cause. No, when do you say the word because? Because. Yeah. I don't say because. When do you say water? Water, yeah. Water, coffee, water. donut, yeah. hot dog. There it is. Hot dog, yeah. Yeah. Hot dog. I can't even say it. It's natural hot, hot dog. dog. Are hot we dog. allowed to tell dirty jokes? You can. Yeah. Yeah. There's no kids watching. Are you sure? Yeah. Can I tell you the funniest story about somebody I ever met from like the the Northeast? Yeah. Is it gross? No, no, it's not gross. It's not gross at all. Go ahead. This is your this this is is your platform. He was from Boston. He was from Boston. He was from Massachusetts. And this is when we were working construction in those fields. And uh we got in the truck one day to go to lunch and we're, you know, driving down the road and somehow it got brought up. I was driving, another guy was from Indiana was in the uh passenger seat, and then Josh was in the back and Josh was always quiet. I mean, mm-hmm. didn't say a whole lot, but somehow we got talking about the state bird and the state bird of Maryland where I grew up was the Baltimore Oriole. Mm-hmm. And then in Indiana was like the Turkey or something like that. You can, blur, you can like blur things, right? Like, like the beep. Yeah. Well, he's going to make a hand gesture. I'm going to make a hand gesture. I mean, I kind of don't, I have to go in okay. and I have to do it. It's a whole thing. All right. Well, we said, we turned around, we said, Josh, what's the state bird of Massachusetts? And as we turned around and looked, he was standing there giving us the finger. Oh, really? <laughs> I got to tell you something. And this comes from that. That's that. It's it's cute in a way that that's that's what you thought was a dirty joke. It's well, very, it's, it's very I'm cute. Sorry. The it's, middle finger. I like that. Yeah. This well, is that a, this is a this is a humble man. It's maybe a family friendly. Well, family family, friendly. We're a family yeah. friendly show. Yeah. Well, we weren't in the beginning. Yeah, now we've gotten closer to being family friend friendly now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember doing that to my mom. I think I came back home in fifth grade, one, fourth or fifth grade, and I was like, Mom, what's this? And I did it. And she yelled at me. In fourth <laughs> grade? Yeah. I Kids think were so. doing it to each other in fourth grade? Yeah. Probably younger now. Wow. We well, always used to do now. the Degeneration X thing to each other in the hall. Remember I remember that one. Yeah. I remember that one. That I don't remember that. I did it to with Amir at the Gay Pride festival i did it to a guy who the guy who i almost fought when he was being mean to me in adriano I don't he walked know. away and i did i, the, I did the degeneration next to him to his back no to his front oh, okay yeah he saw me do it i felt weird after i was like why did i do that yeah so water filtration uh it's always goes back to the water filtration what are some other products that that uh that you've noticed are really popular well the water filtration super important mm-hmm. you know what i mean and my boots are tight. i mean I'm, I'm keep going off subject here okay. but the water filtration super important every product on there we've like we've tested we've gone through it like some websites you go to and there's 50 products there figured out make up your mind like the ones that we have on there are the ones that i have found that it worked the best it's mm-hmm. the best option it's been the best option for my family, so hopefully it's the best option for yours. Like I said, it's down to the – we used to sell 50-gallon drums, which sounded great until you realized go move a 50-gallon drum of water around. Mm-hmm. That's right, a, right. Yeah. That's a bad idea. Yeah. You know, so the water bricks are a great way to store it. Those two water bottles are perfect. Mm-hmm. The pump to pure is like the easiest thing I found to filter water. Yeah. What was the next question? Well, I don't know. Well, okay, so can we talk about the seeds? Because the seeds are very interesting to me. Yep. You still say that they're very popular, right? They're, they're all oh, this time of year. It's crazy. I mean, right. I we, they're it's crazy this time of year. And the, and the health thing too. I mean, everybody's really trying to get healthy. COVID kicked it off. Everybody was stuck at home, mm-hmm. so you know it's kind of become one of those things. It's it's a habit that, or it was something everybody tried one year that's become a habit. So oh, it's like people making people making bread now and now yes, they're experts yes. in Which, sourdough making. 
which, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but like COVID may have like been good for this country. I mean, mm-hmm. it kind of woke people up. It woke people up. You know what I mean? It, it gave people the chance to like take a break, sit back and like start doing things that are healthier, or better for us, that we enjoy a little more, not mm-hmm. just, you know, the daily grind of nine to five, like, you know, yeah. it's odd, but but COVID definitely kicked off the seeds, but that heirloom seed kit, um, it's it's got 39 different varieties in it. You can use them now. They come in mylar foil bags, so you can save them, stick them in a the freezer and save them for 10 years if oh, you really? want. Okay. Wow. But uh, have you ever eaten heirlooms, like vegetables? Um, yeah. Heirloom yeah. tomatoes? Yeah. Yeah. Have you noticed the taste difference between like the heirlooms and the ones you just get like at the wall? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I won't lie to you. So I'm going to say no, I don't notice the difference just because I don't eat them too long. But yeah, what's the difference? Huge difference in flavor. Mm-hmm. Like we've we've taken our produce now to where, and they do this with every product. I mean, like we've, we've, we've figured out a way to like genetically modify these plants to where we may not, it may not be the best tasting, but mm-hmm. that tomato now is great big and red. Like yeah, it's super red. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Doesn't taste like anything. Oh, like but, the heirloom tomatoes are kind of like they—they're not like brown, but they'll have like a little bit of like oh, brown areas of it where yep. it look—it doesn't look ripe or it looks overripe or something like yep. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The the watermelons, like the watermelon seed we have, the watermelons are only bigger than a softball, but they're only about that big. Mm-hmm. You can eat those things the whole way down to the rind and want to keep going. Oh, like really? it's yeah. just oh, they're so good. So oh, interesting. Good. The corn's like just completely different. Mm. Like, a lot of the corn you find now, it's really hard to find heirloom corn. Yeah. Most of it's genetically modified. Yeah. Almost all the corn now is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's big business. Okay. That's the big seed companies coming in and like pretty much take control of that. Oh. Well, here's a question. How is one expected to, let's say, you know, SHTF, shit hits the fan. How is one expected to grow, let's say, these seeds, these vegetables, and let's say they're in an apartment situation? Is that for them or is that for people no, who have their abs- own backyard? No, it's absolutely for them. It's okay. absolutely for them. But th- again, another thing to think about, like just because you buy a seed bucket or you have a seed kit at home, yeah. if it does hit the fan, like you're 60 to 90 days before right. you've got anything coming out of the ground. So you better have some survival food or something stuck away. You know, like you take a take an inventory of what you have here right now. You mm-hmm. know I mean? If the power goes out, you've only got two or three days to, to eat yeah. everything in your freezer and refrigerator. I mm-hmm. think about that all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think about just like knowing like what's shelf stable or whatever, what we're able to eat for a while mm-hmm. versus what's in the fridge. I, I think about that a lot. And a lot of the time I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we go to my wife's at the grocery store twice a week right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And when she goes, it's like you start going through the cabinets. And you're like, yep, time to go to the grocery store. And it's been four days. Yeah. Yeah. So wild. What we what we have at our houses right now isn't nearly what people think it is, mm-hmm. but the uh, but the seed kits the seed kit was actually like a it was originally when we started putting it together like my thought was again I bought that food like you can't buy enough food to last a lifetime, mm-hmm. but you can buy one bucket of seeds and because they're heirlooms you can you can harvest that seed and plant it again and again and again. Right. I think it's just my leaning to the left. I don't mean to be I'm not looking over here. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you could yeah you could look. But it's but the but the seed kit. I mean, that's enough food for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And you you grow a tomato or grow a pepper. There's thousands of seeds in there that will grow that same crop again for generation after generation. So right. that's like the ultimate tool mm. in like a survival kit. Yeah. You know, but that's that we get that a lot. Like you know, I live in a tiny neighborhood. I've got a tiny backyard. Or I live in an apartment. Like you would be shocked, especially the products they have out now. Mm-hmm. You know that how much food you can grow in a small space, how much food you could grow in that window. Yeah, mm. really. Oh, absolutely. As far as like herbs and stuff, or like it, tomatoes. You, you grow plants. tomatoes in front of there. I, really? I wouldn't go like corn or nothing. You may run out of room. But right, right. No, I mean all kinds of stuff can be grown right there in that window. Wow. Yeah, our backyard at our old house in East Nashville, it was some I don't know, I, like a sixteenth of an acre or something like that. But we had two planters, like long, like maybe like eight foot long by like three or four feet wide. We had two of them planter boxes where we tried one time we, we grew cucumbers and i think we did we didn't do cabbage but we did uh not eggplant i can't remember what we did but we did cucumbers for sure oh squash there was like yep. some squash in there um and then we actually had um i know you don't sell chickens but uh, we actually had three chickens and for a while i mean chicken if you can have your own chickens that's pretty great oh yeah mm-hmm. well, i mean great. you see what's going on with the eggs right now yeah yeah we have a fig tree and we have we were going cucumbers, 
tomatoes in our backyard. I mean, obviously not now, but oh, yeah, the fig was really nice. The fig tree was great. You make fig fruit? Fig fruit. Fig dessert? Fig dessert. Yeah. Yeah, we make fig dessert. Okay. <laughs> oh, interesting. You've eaten my fig cake. Oh, wait, I did? Yeah, I made it twice for the show. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I remember it being good, not Upside. the pears. Gina cooks usually when we have a guest. She Upside bakes. Down. Do you want some banana bread? No, thank you. All right. Maybe later. It looks delicious. It it's is It's sourdough good. banana bread. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I use a sourdough starter for it. Not going to eat too much of it. Gina, what are your thoughts? Do you have thoughts about things? Are you concerned? Or thoughts? do you let your husband be concerned about that? Or are you always having these kind of sort of uh, um, invasive thoughts of like, am I not ready if something goes wrong? Am I okay? Yeah, I mean, do the, you have those a lot? The power grid thing is what gets me because we, in the last three months, the power's gone out four times. And then the first time I was out for like almost a week. And the last couple of times, it's like at least a day or and, two. And how do you feel when it goes out for four hours? Yeah, I mean, we're just, you know, we just kind of deal with it. We have a little generator, we have some stuff, but it's like, yep. imagine it going out for like two weeks. Oh, yeah. Which is definitely going to happen in Nashville. Well, I mean, well, here, not Nashville, in our area. Because mm -hmm. while we're while our electricity is out, downtown Broadway and Nashville is just like lit up like a Christmas tree. Yep. They just don't care about us here. <laughs> they well, don't. I, and I tell you, think I mean what we talked about earlier. I mean, there's so many other things that can shut that power grid down. You know, I mean, right. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist here, but I mean we're We like we're, conspiracy theorists. All right, we're borderline World War Three. You know what I mean? Like that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we keep playing this game, bad things could happen. Yeah. You know, and it's you d turns out you don't need to drop a nuclear weapon to no. cause havoc. Right. No. I mean, they, they've derail got, a train or two. Derail a train or two, send a supersonic missile over here, float a balloon over here with an EMP on it, mm -hmm. and the power grid will be out for months and months and months and months and years and years and years. That's nuts. Like That's nuts. No zombie apocalypse necessary. Just cut the power. Cut no the power. No cordyceps necessary. No, right. Yeah, I mean, that's a big one. I don't, think about how much we rely on the electric grid in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, I know. everything. We're not, you're not, we driving. take it for granted. Yeah. I mean, you're not pumping gas. You're not getting water. Like, yeah. It's just, you can't take a hot shower. No. I mean, can't do any of that. If you got an electric stove, forget about it. Well, even if you got gas, gas only going to last so long. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. I think we're, about we're that. We're trying stuff. to ban them. So, I mean, they're going to, oh, yeah. That's right. That makes no sense to me. I don't get that. Mm. Why do you do that? Do you guys have gas or electric? We have electric stove. So. Yeah, we have gas. We love the gas stove. We had a gas stove, then we moved to a place with an electric stove. Is it propane or natural it. gas? Uh, it's propane. That's what we have. It is. Back in Long Island, we had oil that heated the home, mm. and then they had an electric stove. Yeah, so we got the oil. I That's remember the oil truck coming up, pulling up, and then yep. get the oil. oil. Get the oil in the ground. We used to be happy. Look, it's the oil guy. And the oil guy said, get out of here. I'm trying to work. <laughs> And that's it. Um, I'm trying to, so, with the, because uh, I want some buckets. I'm just trying to figure out, like. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what we want to get. Yeah, there's no, it seems Same. like, do, did I ask you, like, what was the biggest order someone ever played? Did you mention, was like, oh, this, was it you that was like a oh, celebrity, like, we did get, like a big order, or what's like the biggest order anyone's ever placed? It was like like two hundred buckets or something. Oh no, no, we've we've sold semi loads of them to people. Really? Yep. To one to like one person? I think I think the semi loads are going to churches. To be honest, with okay, you. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't I don't ask a whole lot of questions and right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, we we sell pallets. Wow. I mean, there's probably probably two or three pallets a day go out, mm -hmm. and then I mean hundreds of buckets. But yeah, no, we get. You'd be surprised what people have. That's what I'm saying. Like, and I, you see where this stuff is going. Like, this yeah. isn't going to a mountaintop in Montana. This mm -hmm. is going to Nashville. Yeah. You know, this is going to Chattanooga. This mm -hmm. is going to Atlanta. Like, yeah. Here's, here's a group of people that I want to maybe talk about. And maybe you can reach out to them directly. Because we have, a, our young, our audience is pretty, audience, our audience is pretty young so right right gina what is like our main audience like 18 to 35 like that's like the bulk of our audience i wouldn't say it's 18 to 35 it's more it's more of like is it 25 to 45 that's maybe the bulk? 25 to 40 yeah oh yeah we don't that, really, that's like that's like we're, the not, 60%. Gen z. we're not we gen don't z appeal yet. to gen but z but there are a, there are a lot of them i mean but the majority is um the 25 to 45 can you speak to let's say even the 18 year olds but let's say the 25 to 45 year olds who might not be thinking about this stuff a lot and who may not you know 
uh, be financially, let's say, successful in life yet. But do you think it's important to just be a little bit prepared? Yeah, well, I mean, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that's not lost on this generation. We all, it seems like the the farther we go, the more we think the government's going to take care of us if something mm-hmm. happens. And mm-hmm. that's obviously not the case. But mm-hmm. I can tell you, it didn't hit me until I had a kid. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I can remember my first couple hurricanes in Florida when they were coming, like, me and my buddies grabbed a case of beer and headed to the beach. I mean, mm-hmm. you have a kid and a wife, and now you're like, there's more than just me to take care of here. Right. You know, so that's kind of when it hit me, like, it's time to start thinking about this stuff. And it was crazy, that feeling. Like, again, this is like, you're not a prepper, you're a weirdo. Like, ah. Uh, well, when we got that thing of food, like, I mean, it, after I looked at it, it wasn't enough, but I still had that thing of food. And like, that first hurricane came through, and I'm like, ah, we're good. Like, there's nothing to worry about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was kind of like just a sigh of relief. Everybody else yeah. is running around like crazy. Yeah. And like, I've got my food taken care of. You know, mm-hmm. we can, we can, we'll be okay. Yeah. And you also, let's say the gas stove or the electric stove isn't working. You guys also have, uh, do you guys have a propane or something that can heat, let's say like boil water? Cause for a lot of your stuff, you add water, you add hot water to it. Yes. You want to use hot water. You don't have to use hot water. You can use cold water, mm-hmm. but it takes a long time to like reconstitute the food if it's gotcha. cold. Gotcha. And quite honestly, who wants cold soup? Right. You know what I mean? Or yeah. like cold lasagna. So the hot water is the key. There's a Kelly kettle on there mm-hmm. that's, you can feed that thing with anything and mm-hmm. it'll heat water up for you. Or, okay. But again, take a half hour and go around your home and figure out what you do if something happened, if the power goes off and you need to heat a bottle or you need, yeah, you know what I mean? That's, like, what, that's what I'm thinking about yeah, constantly. Like, yeah, like take the time to do this, figure out what you have, yeah. you know, and whether it's a Kelly kettle from our store or, you know, a Coleman grill, like right. just nobody thinks about this stuff and you you see the results of it every time there's a national emergency you know what i mean like the guys like i said literally two weeks ago in the sierra nevadas mm-hmm. you guys live on top of a mountain yeah and you don't have enough food like whose what fault are you is, thinking yeah whose fault is this yeah. this organic kit looks good you got Gina, one, what are you looking at organic, organic oatmeal kit. organic pasta primavera organic pineapple chipotle chili organic white cheddar broccoli soup like I said, we just put that one on there, and it is. Cr- is it flying off it's the shelves? Flying off the shelf. I might have to get flying this flying off the shelf. I want to get the um, the heirloom kit, the uh, heirloom vegetable seed kit too. That's what I want to get. Genius, you know, and there's genius, like I said, there's live. there's thirty nine different varieties in there. There's more seeds in there than you'll ever Need. ever use ever use. Um, a lot of those kits are good. Artisan if you herb can, seed kit. I like dill. You got dill in there. Our basil and rosemary is, died, yeah. so we might need some of this. Right. Basil, chive, cilantro, dill, parsley, peppermint, and sage. Get some dill. Mm, you grow some cucumbers. I have to get, get that, too. I might have to do some nope. shopping. Well, I, mean, I mean, like again, this is like, um, and I'll be honest with you, I, like, I'm putting a lot of faith back in this next generation. Mm-hmm. Because quite honestly, my generation messed it up. Our parents' generation messed it up. Oh, I don't know about Gen Z. Well, I mean, that's like... Who are we going to fall He's on? Trying to like, help them. He's I'm trying, trying to, to help them. I'm, I really am. A like, sense and of pride and a sense of preparedness. And you better be them. on TikTok because that's where they all are. I'm hope they're going to turn that off. I hope. I just I made know. them all mad. They throw in things. No, I don't think so. I think you really, if you make, you should make some. You should make some TikToks. Prepper TikTok, which I'm would, sure. You know what? You would probably crush it on. Have you ever just opened TikTok just to see? They would probably love it. Well, him. here's the thing. You wouldn't see any of the depravity based on what you post. And if you follow anybody and based on the hashtags that you use, you would probably only be served things that you were interested in. So I don't think you're going to get doctors dancing over dead bodies or anything like that. Or, <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw a meme that, was, that, that said, um, oh, did you post it? Or did someone else that it? it was like, it was like, guys, you know, your future doctors are filming themselves dancing in hospitals, so you better start eating healthy. And it's just like young Gen Z kids in medical school. One. Yes, it's pretty funny. But you yeah. would do well on TikTok. I think so. Nah, I don't know. I don't I mean, you just have... Don't, don't open the Get door, like a young... But, get like an intern to help you make content and then just talk in front of the camera and they'll just upload it. I'll be and honest. then you can educate them on how to prepare. Because there, I feel... Well, I don't know. Sometimes I can't decide if Gen Z is a little bit and they're becoming more anti-establishment. They're becoming a little bit more disillusioned by the government. So it might be a good time to slip in there and tell them to prep for disaster. Which is like a bunch of like young Ted Kays. Look, we can, we can, take, we can talk about anything here, right? Yeah. yeah. Look, I I honestly believe like these generations coming up are going to do a heck of a lot better than ours. You like, think so? I do. Like, look, we're still stuck in this system and it's 
this this system was fed to us. It was fed to our grandparents. It started with our grandparents. It was fed to our parents. Our parents believe in it wholeheartedly. It fell on us. Like, here, here's my whole theory on the system. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm sure everybody, a lot of people probably believe this, but we're we're grown up. We're we're, we're raised in school to to follow this system. Like, I mean, and it's just it's. It's it's just bred into us now that this is how we feel. This is how we think like life has to be. You know what I mean? But you're you're gonna do good in high school, mm-hmm. and then when you get done with high school, we're gonna send you off to college. You got to pay for that college. But the good news is we're gonna finance it for you. Mm-hmm. And while you're there, we're gonna give you a credit card. Like here's this great ca- credit card. By the way, use it, but don't pay it off. And I remember the first time I heard that, thinking, "Don't pay it off." Like, wait, someone told you that? Y- oh yeah, yeah, they say it's good credit. Yeah, yeah. It's, to not pay your credit card bill? No, no, no. To, don't pay it off. Oh, don't, don't pay, pay it off, but pay off. on time. But okay, make your, but, make right, your minimum make payments payment. every month. Like, and we're taught people this said is, that. Yeah, you truth. weren't told that. No. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. like something that was very commonly taught as part of like increasing your credit score. Yeah, yeah. Then to just say, pay the minimum. Pay like, the minimum. Well, pay. I was always told like pay a little bit more than the minimum, but right. keep a balance yeah. on it because that's going to improve your credit. So never score. pay the full balance right. off like every month. Which, oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, here we are. We're you know we're told get this credit card. Yeah. We're financing college for you. You know, yeah. we're going to give you a credit card. Use it, but don't pay it off. When you get done with this, we're going to give you a great job over here working for this guy at forty hours a week. He's going to give you health care. He's going to give you a four hundred one k. Like. And by the way, we're going to finance a house for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you know, that, yeah. We're going to finance a car for you. Mm-hmm. Like, we're just all stuck in this system. Yeah. That I'm honestly thinking the next generation, the generations now are seeing this. Like, wait you a think second. so? I'm, getting, I, the, man, I'm I getting the opposite feeling. He think he's oh. optimistic because he's not on TikTok. Maybe, maybe that, that's yeah, what it maybe is. That's yeah, what, maybe, maybe that's what it is. We're jaded, I think. I think we're jaded. Think we're we're black pilled like, on Gen Z for the most part. I mean, the one thing that we do see is there's a resurgence in religion, especially in Christianity amongst Gen Z, which is pretty cool. Yep. But as far as like, I don't even think that. I think that's just in our circles. Really? I don't, don't even think, think statistically. Don't think no. Statistically, no. Statistically, yeah, that's if true. you look at the because look at who we talk to, look at the people that we follow, yeah, the accounts that we follow. Of course, you're going to see it's like young, 10% of everybody, young Catholics and right. Ortho Bros, you know. But it's like statistically, it's not really happening with Gen Z. No, it's not. Most of them are just, they're stuck at home. They've been, they're the first social media generation. Like we had social media, the Mm -hmm. first social media account I ever had, I think I was like 16 or 17. Yeah. These kids grew up with it. It ruined them. And this, I mean, like, it doesn't sound like it's related, but it is. This generation is having the least amount of sex ever at their age. That's what I was just about to say. They're stuck at home. They're stuck to screens. They're more addicted to porn than any other generation has been. So, I mean. That's a shame too. So that's, I mean, I don't know. you're very optimistic, <laughs> At least but I'm not no, you're very optimistic, which is good. I think we just see the trends and um, the sort of lines know, on the graphs and we just get a little. No, and you might be right. Worried. It may be the ones I'm talking to, the ones I'm seeing and he, meeting and hanging out with or like are questioning the things that we were just like assumed we had to do. Mm-hmm. And then now I, like, I feel like they're really questioning it and a good, it, it could just be the ones I'm. Well, there might be Who a knows? difference in like city Gen Z and maybe rural Gen Z, or is it just that whole generation? What do you think? I mean, that's a that, that's a good question too. But I mean, know that I know that data is kind of like you can't rely on data fully, mm-hmm. but there's some truth to some data. Yeah, and I don't think that it's widespread for Gen Z to because even if you have even if you go out of the cities, the coastal cities, out of the urban areas, like look at middle America, like Gen Z has been on their phone since they were like eight years old. Yeah. You know, they grew up on social media. They grew up with porn. They grew up not asking girls out on a date and not going to school dances, you know? So they spent the most of their childhood and adolescence on, on phones and on computers. So why so that's be worried? Them. Why be worried if the grid goes down? Why be worried if we go to war? Why would be worried about that stuff? They're so, they're so connected to each other, but then disconnected from yeah, reality. Yeah, I, I at think the same they're time. the most disconnected generation, hmm. which is ironic because they're technically the most connected. Right. What do you think? Good take or bad take? No, I think that's a pretty good. That, that sums it up right there. Hmm. I don't know. Do you have many? Do you have any? Because where does Gen Z cut off? Are they are they college age right now? Or are you they out of the college? Gen Z, I was yeah, because I'm wondering. Do you have Gen any Z Gen Z years. kids that work for you? No, currently. Yeah, we do. Well, there's what, one. What, what, His what, name's what Garrett. He's okay. kind of weird. Yeah. So Gen Z was born any time between ninety five and twenty twelve. Okay. So okay. So the oldest Gen Zs are almost mm. thirty years old. 
right? Because 2025 is coming up, so that right. would make them 30 years old. Okay. And then millennials are born between 81 and 96. Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. I've got more millennials working for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that would make sense. Yeah. Okay. I mean, millennials suck too, but... It's but so- at the very least, I feel like millennials are starting to come around and they're raising their kids differently. I think that's the pro about millennials. Yeah. Is that you had a lot of millennials who have, and this is one of the silver linings of COVID. It woke up a lot of people. It pulled back the veil. It made a lot of millennials realize that you can't rely on the state and the government yeah. for anything. Yep. And that most of the narratives that we've been fed were a lie. I mean, that was also, you know, what Trump kind of exposed with his uh, presidency in, in 2016. And then you've got all these millennials who are now having kids or they have young kids and they're choosing to raise their kids differently because they want to see something different for the country. So I don't know. I don't think it's going to be with Gen Z. I think it's going to be with the upcoming generations. The generation after Gen Z is Gen Alpha. Oh, is that what they're going to be called? Gen Alpha? Gen Alpha. I like that. Man, that's a good one. Yeah. I know. You know what I am? I'm an Omega male. I'm not Alpha. I'm not Sigma. I'm Omega male. Do you know what that is? No. I made it up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you're a millennial no but you know how like the alpha male yeah. the beta males but then they're the sigmas who There's are like probably the disconnected weird sort of ryan gosling sigma males um you never there's got to be an omega there's gonna be a definition well, there is of an, an omega, omega male. there is an omega but i am the omega male i don't know what it constitutes but i am there's that. probably let's see what the definition is really you think there is one let's see okay you think you're an alpha no i'm a gen x no, well, I'm alpha male. Kidding, oh, I'm you know. know. Okay, yeah, you are Gen X. You were like, you're like grunge. You grew up on grunge and Nirvana and all that Absolutely. stuff. And Alan Jackson. <laughs> Absolutely. Can't wait till you hear the definition of, of omega. omega male. A man who chooses not to have a powerful or important role in a social or professional situation, as opposed to alpha males and beta males. Omega males are the lowest of the low on the man food chain. Really? But maybe they're so low that they're not even on the chain. So we exist outside of that. It's medieval grind set. I don't have a where's, desire to be powerful. You want to be that? I don't have a desire to be powerful. I just want to do my thing. Leave me alone. You want to be the lowest of the low on the of, uh, on the man food chain. I don't agree with that definition. What it, what is a, ever, read <laughs> sigma male? You got to hear what a sigma male is. It's the rage all these days with the sigma males. You know, that sounds like that Urban Dictionary. Remember when they were? Mm-hmm. Is that still even there? Yeah, Urban Dictionary. So, oh, like, yeah, yeah. I, I love that Urban they're, Dictionary. Their language. Uh, there are words that the kids are using nowadays. Sigma male is a slang term used in masculine in, in masculine subcultures for a popular, successful, but highly independent and self reliant man. Mm-hmm. That's not the way that you described it. No, you, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling is like the sigma male. Kind of like disconnected a little bit. Yeah, another like term. Like Patrick for, Bateman. Kind of another term for sigma male is lone wolf. Mm-hmm. He's introverted. Yep. They are successful, good-looking, dominant, and influential, but tend to be loners. Yes. So now do you get like the Ryan Gosling and the kind of Patrick Bateman? See, I don't, I don't agree with that definition. I don't know how you find success and be loner at the same time. Yeah, it's a, isn't that kind of impossible? You can't yeah. be successful if you're a loner. Unless well, what not, if, maybe an IT what, guy. That's what I was just about to say. Like, what if you're a guy who develops software, sells yeah, it? That, you don't necessarily need to be like, let's say, like a real estate hustler or something like Silicon that. Silicon Valley. Deal with people. That show is actually pretty good on HBO. Oh, can I give a little update? Because I, I, we were going to maybe yeah. talk about this on a show. And then we got to wrap. Okay. Yes. Then we got to wrap. But I no longer, I no longer work uh, at at the at the market thing. Retired. I retired from it. Jeez. And I got to tell we're you talking something. about generations here. I got to tell you something. <laughs> Early I think retirement. For any, I think for any successful. Uh, politician or someone who wants to be in the public square, you go work at a grocery store for at least three months. I think that's how you meet all sorts of people. I've had all sorts of discussions. I've met all different types of personalities, and it was one of the most beneficial things I've ever done, working at a grocery store. What do you think? I've never worked at a grocery store. Mm. I don't have to take your word on that. Well, have you ever been to one? <laughs> Occasionally. You know those people what that work gro- there? What, gro- what was the grocery store? What was it called? I'm not going to name it. It was a bougie one. It's a bougie one. Like a whole. It was. It's like a Whole Foods, but it's okay. not. It's not Whole okay. Foods, but There's it's like one other one. That it's like know. yeah, yeah. The a big Whole Foods competitor. No, I don't think that's. You're only seeing a part of society there. No, really? Yeah, I see people use food stamps. I see immigrants that don't speak English. I see bougie people. I see middle Americans. 
And then I see people who are on the low rung and I talk to them all the time and you can understand some of their stresses, what's going on in their lives, just based on like what they're eating. And I had two occasions of this where there was a, a, a Mexican family. I knew that they were Mexican because I said, where are you guys are on this in Mexico? And they were buying, <laughs> they, they were buying some stuff and the woman didn't have enough. So she saw on the screen, she didn't have enough. And uh, she was taking some items off. And then one of the little kids that was there was like, no, don't take off the ice cream, like saying it in Spanish. So she kept it on. And I said to her, I was like, listen, I'm going to buy the recipe for it. Don't, you don't have to take anything off. So I saw that. And then I saw like another guy who his card wasn't working. You can tell he was like really embarrassed by it. Just, you know, trying to start his day. And I was like, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. I got you. Couldn't do that every day because then I'd go broke, obviously. But I see all that stuff that people go through see, on a daily my, basis. I, and again, this maybe this is the messed up generations. But I mean, if it's a high end marketplace like that why aren't they going to walmart where it's cheaper exactly. more affordable because it's not cheap because no it's not cheap but i think it's well the produce is affordable the produce no, yeah it is the produce is super affordable Def, trust me not compared to a walmart not, well, not compared to from walmart but it's all organic you're getting better quality food there but then then there's another conversation of like why is better quality food more expensive like that's a whole nother that's a whole nother issue but I was just trying to be nice. No, and, talk and about I think a nice hey, thing. That's really nice of you to do that. Thank you. Yeah, but I'm, honestly, I'm, I'm honestly, honestly as a society, we're messed up. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, the one, the one, the little family there, I was like, don't worry, it's fine. The other guy was like, hey, man, I'll Venmo you. Never got the Venmo. If you're out there watching this, I never got the Venmo. Guy. <laughs> but why are they shopping at Sprouts? If Well, there it is. That's, that's, my, that's my honest question. You named it. Oh, sh you can bleep it out. No, it's okay. I don't, I don't work there anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, it's fine. Just bleep. Beep. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Um, no, I, the, I'll, it's, the it's only like reason that, why I work like there is because it's so though. close I mean, to where I live. Like, I mean, look around. Like, it's, it's, our, our whole society is like that now. I know. You know what I mean? Like, we all, we all think we should live like our parents did after they worked for 30 or 40 years mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you drive around and see the cars people are buying right now. I'll tell you what, that was a good life lesson for me. When I was in high school, I worked at a Ford dealership. Mm. When, I, when I went to college, the guy that owned the Ford dealership actually gave me some money to go to college. And when I'd come home during the summer, he would let me uh, work in the office. And I was, uh, I'd help the manager up there, like the, yeah. you know, work the deal, pull, pull credit apps on people and stuff like that. And it was a, it was the best life, lefin, life lesson I've ever had because that guy that came in dressed head to toe, I mean, wanted the, at that time it was a $50,000 car, like, was so far in debt, couldn't, yeah. I mean, everything was financed. And then you look at that farmer that come in, and I mean, he had a big chew in the side of his lip. Well, like, he had cash, man. And he was paying with a paper bag full of cash. Right. You know? Like, that opened my eyes as to like, really what society's oh, yeah. like, you know, mm -hmm. like, don't, yeah. you look around at some people, you're like, how the heck do they do that? Like, oh, yeah. well, they're financed. Just, everything is on a credit card or right. financed, or it's just. One one last question here, and um, and then we can wrap it up. But do you think, because when you're saying you're working on a Ford dealership, do you think there will ever, ever be an economy like how our grandparents had, where they can work in a factory for 30 years and afford to buy a house, buy a couple cars, live comfortably, and retire? Now I'm going to make our grandparents mad, but they ruin that for everybody else. Do you think so? Yeah. Mm. I mean, you can't work somewhere for 20 years and expect 100% mm -hmm. retirement. And yeah. I mean, they knew when they were working those deals that that wasn't going to last. Yeah. Dang. Now we're paying for it. Dang. Okay. Well, and, I, and again, I'm, I mean, I'm no economist here and I don't work at Ford, but there's no reason a Ford truck's $120,000. There's mm -hmm. not $120,000 worth of components and labor in a truck that takes half a day to build. Right. But there is retirement you're paying for everybody else that worked there. Oh. Yeah. Raise your eyebrows again, Gina. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, Clayton, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. Shout out to the website. Heavensharvest.com. And we're going to be talking about Heaven's Harvest a lot more on the show. Hey. Yeah, we're going to make an ad of us drinking the toilet water from the water bottle. We're going to do that. Right. I want to make an ad of sowing some seeds. I want, I, I really, I'm excited about um, this partnership because I'm, I'm excited about a lot of the partnerships we have. But this is something like I can put my hands on, I can get my hands dirty, and I can actually feed my family with it. I think. And, really and again, cool. it's one of those things. It takes it takes a catastrophe before people even think about this stuff. It mm -hmm. takes being stuck on top of a mountain before you even think mm -hmm. about it. But the sad truth of it is, like if this if the day comes and you really need this stuff and you don't have it, yeah, you don't get a second chance at it. You Here's know? a question: Do we have a code? Do you know yes. if we have a code set up? What is it? I think we do. Great. 
Great. Is it great? It's just great. I'm gonna go. It's gonna. The link is gonna be in the description uh, with our code set up because I think it's somewhere. I just. I. I, I yeah, I, 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 I talked really to. Think this through. Talk to our mutual friend about it. It's great. Okay. Oh, it yeah. is great. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Good. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Great. great. Well, Not awesome. Oh no, no. Yes, great. <laughs> great. It's probably. It, yeah. Don't worry. It's probably is it like promo code great on checkout or something like that. Yeah. Okay. We'll iron that out. The link will yeah. be in the description with all the information. Uh, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate appreciate you traveling. Uh, the links that you did, we know you got to get home very soon. But uh, Clayton Llewellyn from he- Heaven's Harvest, the CEO and janitor of a great company that we are forming a new partnership with. So thank you very much. Hey, thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Bye. 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 And that's how that. That's how that works. <laughs>